Time has expired. The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Oregon, Ms. Hoyle, for five minutes. Thank you. I represent the south coast of Oregon, 250 miles of the most beautiful coastline in the United States. Sorry, everybody else, but I do. Um, and we're on the forefront of seeing the effects of climate change, whether it's wildfire, because um, we have federal and state and private um, timberlands, drought, ocean acidification. So I firmly believe that we need to move to green energy, move away from fossil fuel, and move to green energy resources as quickly as possible. I also am one of the few people in Congress who's actually run an agency. I ran, I was the labor commissioner, so I ran the Bureau of Labor and Industries. And one of the things that I found was coming into an agency um, was that there was a lot of bureaucracy and rules that people didn't understand. And it made our, the things that were written were written at a law school or graduate school level, which meant that vulnerable workers, small businesses, couldn't understand the process. So I also think, I, I do think that many of my Republican colleagues across the aisle think that the solution to that is to privatize government um, work or to just decrease or wipe away regulation. And um, what I think is we need to ensure that we have protections for workers. We need to have high environmental standards, right, for anything that we do, but there is a way to do it. And I think as Democrats, we have to acknowledge that the process is difficult so that my community, we're, we're weighing in on potential offshore wind, um, but the tribal communities, the low-income communities, the fishing communities that want to weigh in on this, the business community, they need to be able to access the information, which means that that process could be shorter without decreasing the standards if we make it more accessible, you shouldn't have to, no offense to lawyers, but you shouldn't have to hire a lawyer to weigh in on what's happening in your community. So I think we can do both and, and I am happy to work in partnership with anyone to make those things more accessible, more, more reasonable, and for normal people, no offense to lawyers in the room, for normal people to understand what the rules are. So I think we can do both of those things. But my question is for um, Mr. Sandberg. So, and, and I did prepare for this hearing, um, and I saw that uh, American Clean Power highlighted an article on the 100,000 new jobs um, already created by the Inflation Reduction Act, um, which Democrats passed last Congress. The clean energy tax credits in the Inflation Reduction Act also will make sure workers are paid prevailing wage and the projects that use workers from registered high quality apprenticeship programs um, like the ones I oversaw as labor commissioner um, will be utilized. And I think that's important as we build our workforce because I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, workforce is critical that we expand and invest in. So um, could you share more about the jobs being created thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act? Thank you for the question. It's an exciting time for the clean energy industry, and as the industry continues to grow, um, we continue to employ more people. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the, the most recent uh, Inflation Reduction Act uh, included some provisions for a certain labor, um, to use certain types of labor, and the industry has supported that and has continues to work with government to, to get a workable framework around that. But we are excited as the industry continues to grow across the value chain at the jobs that are coming whether it's in manufacturing, whether it's installation and development. So it, it provides a rich opportunity for us to continue to grow the, both the domestic workforce and the domestic manufacturing base. Gentlelady yields back. The chair recognizes.